Why did it open up your browser? And we're going to download Rufus. This is for making the bootable USB. Just select this version of Rufus here. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to do it. But uh, you can click Save As and then save it. And then same for the Arch ISO. I'm just going to search Arch Linux ISO. And we go to Downloads. And scroll down. Into the page here, uh, there'll be a bunch of download links. Select the one closest to you, uh, whichever you want. It'll probably be in your country or a different one, doesn't matter. I've already got those downloaded, but same as Rufus, just download, save, wait for the download to be finished. And I'm just going to close my browser here. All right, start up Rufus, click yes to allow it to make changes. Have your USB plugged in, select the Arch ISO you want. Yeah, select the ISO you want, and then um, click Start, and it will make the bootable USB for you. Now you have to load up your BIOS or your UEFI, or whatever you want to call it. And then you just re reboot your PC, uh, press F2 or Delete, whichever works for your PC, but F2 usually. And then you'll get into your BIOS, select the USB to boot from, and you will get to a screen that looks like this once you boot it from the USB. Then uh, you just want to type in arch install. All right, and then we're going to do the disk configuration. You should use best effort, select the drive you want, select ext4. Would you like to create a separate partition for slash home? No. Password for root, whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can change the host name if you'd like to, that's just the name of the PC. Here, uh, we're going to select the desktop. Type desktop KDE. For audio server, we're going to use Pipewire. User accounts, you can add one, just add a user, add a username, whatever you want it to be, add the password, and then just select yes for sudoer. And then you can add more if you want, confirm exit. Additional packages, uh, you can add whatever you want here, but I've got a few that uh, you can add. Go, base develop, get MPV, Steam, Firefox, uh, Speed Crunch is decent as well, and Nano. And then you can leave Man off, it doesn't work here. Yeah, you'll see in a second. Just enter and then it verifies. And for network, I'm just going to click this one. Uh, for network connect configuration, set your time zone here to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as default, but find your time zone. And then optional repositories. So we're going to turn both of these on. Press tab on the optional repository, and then go down and tab, and then enter, and you're good to go. Just wait for this to be done, it'll take a few minutes. Uh, you'll be asked if you want to root. you can choose no to that, you don't need to do that. And then reboot, uh, reboot the, the USB with the ISO on it from the PC, reboot USB. And here you can just do rebooting. If you had removed it, you wouldn't be met with this screen, but I didn't, so I'm just going to select boot from it with the existing OS. And then here you can see the user just log in. And here's your KDE desk, your KDE desktop. I'm just looking at all the programs installed, and then I seen that uh, Speed Crunch wasn't installed because I had missed it earlier. Uh, if you had followed along and listened to me, you would have it at this point, so you don't need to do this. Uh, this is just the calculator. Uh, but this is how you install uh, programs once you have everything installed. 
just sudo pacman dash sy and then the program name you want to install and you see it so it pops up uh, and then you say why and then here's steam we installed this earlier it's just downloading everything else and we've got a few other things we have to do you can see i type in blkid here the block ids for your hard drives or ssds uh, in case if they weren't added previously and i'll show you here how to add them so that's a little peer for software and things like that. So we're gonna cd to slash etc. And this is where the fstab is located, the file system tab, just sudo nano fstab. And here's where you can add additional stuff. Uh, so you just have to put it in an entry like the one above uh, with the UUID. and the block id plus you need a location to mount it to uh, we'll go over that in a second so here uh, is where i made some corrections to that previous thing so you can see the uid here and how it should be laid out here i'm just making directories in the mount direction so if you see the slash mnt uh, you can make a directory there call it whatever you want drive one doesn't matter and then I'm just going to remove it because I don't need it. And then here we have some stuff we need to do for Steam. Uh, so you can either do this through console or the, or like the terminal or the file system manager. Uh, so you can see here, I just go back to the home file and we just look around and so what we're looking for is hidden files. So here is the file manager. So you can do something similar here. Here I enable hidden files. Then we go to dot steam. And I'm just changing it over to dark mode. And just like steam. Here you can see the config file is missing. So what we're going to do is just create a text file. Steam underscore dev dot cfg. So let me just save that there. Then just enter in these two lines and that should cover it. And just save the file. This week is the download speed because it doesn't function properly without that. And now we're just going to install another service. So uh, you may not need this. This is yay. Uh, this is for external repositories, but you'll probably find you need it at some point. Just in the home folder, uh, we're going to make a directory for yay, and then we're going to enter it. And using git, uh, we're going to git clone. Uh, so you just copy and paste uh, the URL from the A website. And just, you know, it can be exactly the same as the one that I have here. Uh, you just want to enter the EA folder that we just made, that we just downloaded, and then type make pkg si, and this will make this package. And then it will just make here for a second. And it's done. Now you can use EA to download things from the AUR. And coming over to Steam for the last part, uh, this, just head up to Steam, Settings, and then go down to Compatibility, and enable these two settings here. This will allow Proton to run on all your games by default. All right, and you're done. Set up with Linux for gaming. And if we come over here, just open up Steam, see, just out of the box. 
Let's see if I can get something like this. I have, uh, of course, I have enabled Ball Kitten repackaging through Steam as well. What do I see here? Let me just open this up. You load right in. You can check out games with. That's pretty much all. Cry engine. the longest intro ever.